next we have Dr. Vimla Siddhi Uluwattage, another pillar of the Ceylon College of Physicians and in the council. Uh, he is a consultant physician from the teaching hospital Karapitiya and uh, he is an expert in leptospirosis management and his talk will be on the new in leptospirosis. Thank you, Shaman. Um, yes, so today's my topic is what's new in leptospirosis. <clears throat> Let's start with an introduction. Leptospirosis is the most widespread zoonosis. It presents all content, uh, continents of, except Antarctica. So it's a worldwide infection. And it is considered a neglected, but has become an emerging and re-emerging. So that is important, re-emerging disease in most parts of the world with a significant impact on health of humans as well as animals. So that we are talking about an illness which affects both humans and animals. And so because of that, the impact in general is significant. So it affects, in, in, it infects more than 1 million people and is responsible for about 60,000 deaths per year worldwide. The actual disease burden of leptospira could be much more than the estimated because we all know that it is heavily underreported. The leptospira is the group of 17 neglected tropical diseases characterized, categorized by WHO. South Asia considered to be a highly endemic region for leptospirosis. This is the world map of leptospirosis where you can see uh, the red indicates the highest in density and uh, Sri Lanka is in red and indicating that Sri Lanka is a hotspot uh, in the world of leptospirosis. So moving on to the pathogen, the leptospirosis is caused by a spirochete from a genus leptospira. In the past, the genus Leptop leptospira divided into two species, pathogenic, which is mainly uh, interrogans group, and then saprophytic, uh, leptospira bifecta group. So <coughs> you have two species, it's very uh, simple. And uh, subclassification was done uh, and into zero of us, and it was based on the outer uh, membrane protein of the organism. Based on that, uh, they described more than 250 zero us at that time. And later on, the antigenically related zero us were then grouped into 24 zero groups. So we had uh, two species of leptospira, uh, 24 zero groups, and then uh, 250 zero us uh, previously. So what is new? It's a genomic, a genotypic uh, classification is a newer classification based on DNA hybridization. It defined 20 species where there are 90, nine pathogenic species, five intermediate types and six saprophytic. So altogether there are 20 species. And now we have 13 pathogenic, actually taking into consideration nine pathogenic and five intermediate there are 13 pathogenic, and there are more than 260 uh, zero hours. The number is growing daily. Different zero hours are considered to be adopted to specific reservoir holes. For example, mice uh, associated with uh, in, in Icta hemorrhagica, rats, Copenhagen, and pigs, Australis. So thus, their recognition is important from the epidemiology epidemiological point of view, and the common prevalence zero groups in Sri Lanka, such as Tarasovi and Otamnalis. The buffalo is the main carrier animal, according to the, uh, the research done by Dr. Lilani Parmanayaka. Uh, and the majority of the zero positive cases from goal area, according to our observation and data, are belong to Tarasovi zero group. Moving on to epidemiology, the leptospirosis is endemic mainly in countries with humid tropical or subtropical climatic climate. It's mainly developing world due to the negligence, rapid and unplanned urbanization, poor sanitation, 
and inclement weather helps spread of this infection uh, in these countries. But now, however, the leptospira is emerging in countries with temperate climate as well and predicted to rise in the near future because the, they experience warm winters uh, lately. They are, uh, it's, a, it's a common uh, phenomenon, the warm winters, that's a very frequent thing. An increase in number of imported cases because of the international travel and there are increase uh, in water-based recreational activities and increasing continental travel. All these favors uh, the spread of infection in the temperate climate as well. But wherever it is temperate or uh, tropical countries, these kind of scenes are not uncommon in, even in the major cities. So the flooding and environment, environmental pollution is quite common thing in wherever you go around the world. So that facilitates the uh, spread of this disease all world over. So many countries in the world has recorded rise in incidence. The inclement weather mainly uh, influences this, especially floods, and increase in red surface population in the cities. The studies done, done in various countries have shown that major cities, most of the major cities experiencing increasing red surface population that helps uh, spread of this disease. And global warming helps better survival of pathogen as well as rodents. So the include adaptability of the leptospira to adverse condition and surviving in the environment. For example, this uh, biofilm, the leptospira has a unique ability to coexist with other organisms which are found in the water and soil. So they find it, uh, they, they, they develop various strategies to coexist with other organisms so that they achieve better survival in the environment. So, that is an important thing uh, in consideration of uh, the increase in this uh, infection. The poor cooperation with veterinary sector, actually, world over this is a problem because less attention paid to animal leptospirosis. Whatever you do to control human leptospirosis is going to be useless or less effective if the animal leptospirosis is going to, going to continue because the animals continue to uh, spread the disease, contaminate the environment, and so that humans can get continue to get uh, exposed. So the prevalence of leptospires is still underestimated and underreported. The day that we are going to report it properly is going to be a, there will be an exponential rise of leptospirosis cases in the world over. So in the future there will be a, a exponent, exponential rise in numbers uh, of leptospirosis. So, sorry. This is a very familiar uh, diagram of all of you. The rat is the natural host of this uh, leptospira and it excretes uh, organism into the environment contaminating water and soil and so that the human can get affected and again the the domestic animal also can get infected and the domestic animal too contaminate the environment so that the human can get affected. And this is uh, the leptospira pyrosis is an interplay of three different main uh, factors, the host, pathogen and the environment, environment or the epidemiology. The host, how susceptible the host is, is going to determine whether he's going to get a severe electrospirosis or not. The, the, this is based on the, actually, uh, the, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the patient, uh, the host is predisposed to have certain things and especially it's genetically determined. But we will go into the details of this thing later. And the, with regards to pathogen, if the patho pathogen is a virulent form, there you end up having a severe illness. And the, the environment, how conducive the environment for the spread of the disease is also determine the spread of disease and uh, the complication and everything. So this is the interplay of three factors which uh, 
give the uh, final outcome of the uh, infection. The carrier, the leptospira has been found in virtually all mammalian species examined. Because of that, control of the disease is a challenge. There are two types of carriers. The first is asymptomatic carrier, rodents. Usually, leptospira can remain in renal tubules and shed in urine for two weeks to few months. In rare cases, for lifelong. Symptomatic carriers, domestic animals. These domestic animals may or may not be symptomatic, but they often become symptomatic. Like in dogs, uh, they can become ecteric, hemorrhagic, and uh, they can uh, develop uh, uremia and uh, complications like abortions. And same way, the cattle and pigs can get, also get, can get affected. So the rodent, rodent leptospires could be regarded as an indicator and a risk factor for human leptospirosis. If one can do a surveillance on rodent leptospirosis, that will give you an indication as to how risk that particular community for lep leptospirosis. In Sri Lanka, according to the MRI, which is the only reference lab for confirmation of leptospirosis in Sri Lanka, according to their data in 2015, there were four zero groups were responsible for more than 90% of positive cases received to MRI confirmation. So Tarasovi, Autumnalis, Australis, and Hebdomides were the uh, four groups which were responsible for more than 90% of the cases in Sri Lanka. Interestingly, the animal carrier of all of them is buffalo. As you all know, zero groups uh, usually common in rats and mice are ectahemorrhagia and Copenhagen. This is a less common uh, agent to cause leptospirosis in Sri Lanka. So even though still rodents are the main animal carrier, buffalo plays a major role in the domestic setting, especially in rural areas. The situation may be different in urban area because it's a rat, rat which is the main uh, carrier uh, who spreads uh, in infection in the urban areas. The control of infection in animal is also important. The collaborative work with veterinary sector is very important. The transmission. Survival of pathogenic leptospires in the environment depend on many factors. It's the pH of the uh, environment, the temperature, presence of other inhibitory substance in the soil will determine the the survival of uh, leptospira. Leptospires can be isolated from environmental water bodies and moist soil. We call it bio burden. The rain washes off fertilizer from the soil during floods and creates an alkaline pH, which favors the survival of uh, organism. In moist soil, they can survive for weeks to years, especially if the pH is alkaline. Loam soil and shaded areas, which are very commonly found in many rural areas in the country, provides an ideal environment for longer survival of this organism. So, in the exposure, when you, when you come across a patient, it's not only the contact with the mud, it's very important to inquire about whether the patient has had a, a contact with moist soil. It's also important and should be inquired in the exposure history. The exposure history further goes, and <clears throat> it should be uh, it should go beyond the traditional occupation. Yeah. Usually, when we we think that the traditional high risk groups like farmers, manual workers, and laborers are the people that uh, they get uh, leptospirosis, but it's not so nowadays. The non routine exposure, for example, most of the Sri Lankans engage in outdoor ag agriculture activities on part time. So inquiring into that aspect is an important thing uh, which will uh, actually give an idea as to uh, at the initial presentation when they come as uh, acute febrile illness, this exposure history has become very important. So accidental exposures like especially during uh, floods and uh, with various other natural calamities, rescue workers who are not usually exposed to this environment, but the rescue workers and volunteers can get exposed in mass care and also 
students and teachers we we come across a lot of uh, these cases um, in uh, in the hospitals students and teachers who clean involved in cleaning classroom etc uh, can get infected which are, we, we, obviously these things are overlooked and not paid much attention during initial uh, history taking because of that the uh, there will be delay in diagnosis the recreational water based uh, related activities are increasing in the country so that is also an important area that we need to pay attention during uh, taking history the clinical features to the traditional way of uh, classification of clinical features are anecdotic or mild self mild form where the that is the majority of the more than 80% of the leptospirosis cases are mild cases they are anecdotic so the ictery considered to be a feature of severe leptospirosis but so what's new in uh, clinical features is the pulmonary hemorrhage in leptospirosis which is a complication described in 1995 is usual in anecdotic form of leptospirosis they don't become ictery very often and they usually present with hypotension uh tachyc tachypnea hemoptysis chest pain and acute pulmonary edema so icterus is not synonymous with severe leptospirosis how to differentiate mild form of leptospirosis from the severe form of leptospirosis that is very important because severe leptospirosis has high mortality of more than 40% so if one can recognize this severe form of leptospirosis leptospirosis at the uh, Uh, on say so it is very important and you can pay much more attention to save this their lives so severe form of leptospirosis quite characteristic by uh, pre- uh, they present with hypotension oliguria is a common feature and hyperkalemia as opposed to hypokalemia are the uh, clinical features of severe leptospirosis at the onset at the initial stage of the illness but as you all know the leptospirosis pulmonary hemorrhage can present with tachypnea hemoptysis arterial hypoxia and uh, chest x-ray alveolar shadows the leptospirosis and septic shock hypotension is a frequent finding in leptospirosis and recent study shows that lot of similarities between uh, severe leptospirosis and septic shock is mainly histologically and immunologically there have been a lot of similarities especially in the findings in spleen and other organs we shown that there are uh, quite a big similarity between lept- uh, severe leptospirosis and septic shock so one can conclude that severe leptospirosis behaves very much like a bacterial sepsis pathology of s- specific organ involvement every organ in the body can get affected however high mortality is caused by involvement of kidney heart and lung it has been pursued that clones with enhanced virulence might be a contributing factor to recent emergence of complications such as pulmonary hemorrhage however not much evidence available to support this and what we have observed in sri lanka and also in other countries is the severe complications of leptospirosis have different geographical distribution for example the pulmonary hemorrhage commonly found in wet soil and at the same time the pancreatitis has been reported in dry soil more often so one can postulate that different seroas may have variable geographical distribution depending on the adaptability of the pathogen to different climates so probably the pathogen who is responsible for pulmonary hemorrhage is Uh, preferably to surviving in the wet zone whereas uh, it cannot it or oh, it's a less uh, become a less uh, common path- uh, pathogen in the dry zone the immunology is a very important uh, topic when when we talk about leptospirosis the severe leptospirosis consists of 10% of cases the severity of the infection may depends on the virulence factors of some path- some pathogenic strains and the mainly the severity is male mainly depend on the immune response of the leptospira response to leptospira it is the major contributor the organ damage is due to first 
the mechanism adopted by leptospira to evade defense me mechanism in the body. The leptospira adopt various strategies to evade a def uh, body defense system. It's, it's, for example, uh, it produced uh, proteases which can uh, evade or which can impair the complement system. And it can uh, neutralize the action of neutrophils activity and uh, as well as it can destroy the mic microbial so that they can invade the body and escape in the defense mechanism and uh, damage the bodily organ. Secondly, and most importantly, the immune response to the pathogen. Uh, normally, the immune response is important and causes inflammation, which is an essential part in elimination of any pathogen. But the problem is the immune response, if, we, if it becomes dysregulated, then there will be overproduction of cytokines, which is called cytokine storm, and which leads to immunoparalysis, and which, again, uh, the cause of sepsis and multi-organ failure. Thirdly, the genetic susceptibility of an individual. In mild cases, immune response is well regulated and is fine-tuned and, and it, it controls the infection quite early in the illness, which is usually the genetic, which has genetic basis. And that is the, so the latest finding is that which is uh, genetically susceptible. People develop severe uh, leptospirosis because their immune reaction is over, I mean, over, overactive and is dysregulated and which causes organ damage. So ultimately, the severity of leptospirosis is a thing which is mostly genetically determined. The biomarkers of leptospirosis, uh, severe leptospirosis, mortality is clearly associated with the severity of the illness. In severe cases, which uh, if, if the severe cases can be identified quite early, it will help immensely to reduce the mortality and mor morbidity. The overproduction of cytokines or cytokine storm occur in severe leptospira. Within the first few days, this happens. And recent studies show that there have been uh, I mean, increased elevation I mean, uh, levels of uh, various uh, interleukins and various other um, chemoactive uh, substances in the blood of patients with severe leptospirosis. Significantly, there is a significant association between IL-6 and pulmonary hemorrhage. And also, the IL-6, IL-8, and IL-10 is clearly associated with higher mortality in leptospirosis. So, all this indicates that Uh, indicate that cytokines can be taken as a reliable indicator or a biomarker to identify severe cases of leptospirosis quite early in the disease. So in the future, hopefully, these things will be available so that in the early in the disease, you can differentiate a severe form from the milder form. The liver involvement may be vary from mild to severe hepatic dysfunction. Usual thing is uh, what we observe in clinically is the increased ALP and total bilirubin, making a polystatic picture. But ALP and AST activity is very mild or less prominent. The, whatever the pathology uh, is complicated uh, thing has been described. Uh, the, the one relieving thing is that deaths rarely occur due to liver involvement alone. So severe liver involvement is. Uh, rarely occurs, but even then, the, the death is rare with uh, liver involvement alone, unless patient develop multi-organ involvement. The, in the kidney, there are two types of injuries. One is acute tubular necrosis, which happens quite early in the illness due to direct nephrotoxic effect of the uh, leptospira, which happens quite early in the disease. The acute, then lately, the acute intestinal nephritis occurs, which is, which is a, toxin induced immune response. So in quite early in the disease, toxic injury causes acute tubular necrosis that leads to rise in uh, serum creatinine quite early in the, even in the first or second day of the illness, you will see that these patients comes with elevated serum creatinine levels. The later on, acute interstitial nephritis occurs and which causes the further dam uh, renal damage and which is an immune mediated injury. So renal damage is of two types, early toxic effect and late immune-mediated injury.
lung pulmonary hemorrhage pulmonary hemorrhage as a complication of leptospira was described recently and in 1995 nicaragua reported several deaths due to this and name it as severe pulmonary hemorrhagic syndrome the characteristic of this syndrome is minimal and re minimal renal and hepatic involvement they don't usually become aneuric or they they, they don't uh, they, they, at presentation they are not ictal so their predominant picture is respiratory distress they become tachycardic hypoxic and they are associated with very high mortality more than uh, 50 to 70% of mortality is the problem in this uh, complication pathophysiology of pulmonary hemorrhage so this uh, uh, histological demonstration of uh, an alveolus and what happens in uh, severe leptospirosis is there is a linear deposition of immunoglobulins and complements on the alveolar surface of the epithelium which causes direct damage to alveolar capillary membrane and leads to hemorrhage into alveolus so myocarditis in leptospirosis presence of leptomyocarditis is evident by hypotension acute pulmonary edema there are various uh, ecg changes compatible with myocarditis the elevation of enzymes and echocardiogram finding the exact mechanism of cardiac involvement is not known but the important thing to remember is that severe myocarditis causes high mortality now we never it uh, the myocarditis is easy to diagnose in leptospirosis actually but the problem is how to manage this when when it is associated with the renal and uh, especially pulmonary uh, involvement the mortality goes uh, very high the diagnosis the methods that are that i am going to be concerned today topic is uh, mainly serological and molecular so molecular uh, under serological diagnosis the microagglutination test or mat becomes a more very important and is more it's the most widely used confirmatory test and for long it considered as the gold standard but is losing its popularity because uh, of the low antibody levels in the acute phase so this is not a, a good test to do it during acute phase to diagnose or confirm the case they cannot differentiate recent or pre previous infection because uh, mat detects both igm igm and igg uh, antibodies so often uh, need convalescent sample to confirm the diagnosis so it's usually not practical need uh, to maintain panel of live pathogenic leptospira so it's so you need the uh, highly sophisticated lab to main, uh, do this uh, investigation do mat detect zero specific igm and igg antibodies which is normally appears later than genus specific igm so it has low sensitivity and high specificity mat is best for confirmation so igm elias at least gain in popularity and more reliable during acute phase detect genus specific igm which appear earlier as i told you before various types of antigen used in increase sensitivity to increase the sensitivity and specificity high sensitivity and specificity has been uh, reported with uh, igm elias and is now considered to be superior to mat so it's best for the diagnosis as well as confirmation of the disease rapid di diagnostic kits uh, detect detect uh, genus specific igm and uh, the, these are they are easy to use commercially available bedside kits can be used for point of care testing so has high sensitivity and reasonable specificity is best for screening the genomic diagnostic test is mainly pcr the advantages are positive it become positive in quite early in the disease and it can detect live as well as dead le leptospirosis the specimens during a bacteremic phase you can send blood for the first uh, 10 days you know this bacteremic phase yeah, you can find the organism in the blood and after that the organism will be excreted in urine so that you can uh, send urine after 10 days of the illness so if the duration of illness is not known you can send both many forms of pcr are available depending on the targeted gene conventional pcr real time pcr real time transcriptase uh, pcr so rt pcr or real time pcr was 
shown to be a preferred to conventional antibiotics. Uh, it is quicker, easier to perform, and less prone to contamination. Management, nothing new actually. Early antibiotic treatment reduces severity and complications of leptospirosis. Kepotaxim and keptriaxin has been shown to be non inferior to penicillin for serious leptospirosis. Steroids, conflicting evidence is regarding effectiveness. IV methylprednisolone may be effective in pulmonary hemorrhage. The newer therapeutic approach, therapeutic plasma exchange, uh, the observation study done in Gold, Sri Lanka, shows improved survival in leptospirosis pulmonary hemorrhage. And the proper clinical trial has been done and awaiting a publication. ECMO. There are a lot of large number of case reports available to show that ECMO is effective in leptopulmonary hemorrhage. So immunomodulatory modulator therapy seems to be effective in treatment of severe leptospirosis. Chemoprophylaxis, the po both post-exposure and pre-exposure, uh, chemoprophylaxis found to be effective in a limited number of disease uh, trials. And uh, this is a very effective way of controlling disease. For, I think we need to pay more attention and try to find more evidence for this. However, needs further evaluation of this in the future. In summary, even though leptospirosis is considered as a neglected tropical disease, it's not only in the tropics, but re-emerging as a significant infection world over. Changing global environment and evolving socioeconomic conditions appears to be encouraging its spread. There is a renewed enthusiasm in the research community worldwide, and a lot of new knowledge is coming up to fill the gap. Now, actually, uh, even though it, it is a neglected disease uh, in, in, the, uh, in the world, but the, now the attention has been paid to unravel the pathophysiology as well as the immunology of this uh, illness to. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, sphere, the research community to find a uh, effective uh, treatment for this. So that concludes my uh, presentation and.